Hello. Um, thank you very much, Ricardo, for having me here. I hope that I'm able to give you some interesting information. Um, sorry for my limited presentation uh, compliance. Uh, in my organization, th this is what I'm showing you right now. Um, but on that statement as well, these are my views and not the views of Jeffries. Please do not take them as being reviews of Jeffries and just understand that what I'm not wanting to talk about. Great. Um, if anyone does have any questions during what I'm talking about, please take the opportunity. I'd love to be able to help understand and explain things. Uh, what we're doing is not nearly as technical or advanced as many of the other conversations that have been had, but we are using these concepts to make actual investment decisions and advise our clients around it. Um, many of these are things that people assume are commonly applied and used throughout the industry. There have been speakers here today that are using them in other ways as well, great. Uh, there's an aspect around this that is underutilized and underappreciated within my space within the industry and something we are actively working to shift. So with that, I wanna give some context. Um, equity research and why am I here? Um, so my background is I'm actually traditionally a risk manager for a member of multi-manager hedge funds and I think that's important to incorporate in that traditionally data strategy, data research was not formally a function within most of research. It was something as an afterthought, it was something that was being done secondarily. Um, where I had been previously, we used a lot of data to judge ourselves and to analyze our own teams to figure out who was good at things and who wasn't. So a lot of the skills I learned previously at being at a hedge fund were then translated into how could we modify this to instead of analyzing a portfolio and a group of investors, instead flip it to how can we actually look at forward-looking investment decisions and change behavior around how people think about this. Another key thing I wanna kinda of dig into is, is research. I've already had a few conversations today with people around the conference who hear the term research and assume that they have an understanding around it. I just wanna set this stage for it so we're on the same page. My teams are the people who uh, fundamentally analyze a company, meaning we're not trying to build out a quantitative model to give us a framework to say we're scoring a group of companies off the same metric, which is why this type of data is interesting. What we're trying to do is find a key question that drives the, the key variable that a human has decided is incredibly important and shift it from being something that was previously assumed or estimated to something that probably still has some assumption around it, but can at least be based on something in a grounded fundament fundamental observation. So instead of, I think more people are going to the store, instead I'm using a data set from outside in the hall to actually tell me I know more people are going to this store, for example. Um, Another key piece around this, I think I already hinted on a little bit, was the, the comment I just made around depth versus breadth, right? I assume, and it is an assumption, that many people in the room are used to thinking about when you view the stock market, you view investing, a quantitative investing framework. Again, that is taking a single or a group of concepts, applying to a large group of securities, and then making some kind of signaling off of it to give you a group of names you wanna own versus a group of names you don't. That is not what we're trying to do. We are trying to help this to understand a key question to be able to delve it apart. Um, great. Another key piece around this that I wanna kind of set on. Jeffries, what are we doing here? Why is this different? There are several other major players within this space that have functions not from the outside to similar to my own, meaning they have a high data co component. 10 years ago, if you wanted to do that, you couldn't do it without having a significant number of people like yourselves in the room work directly for you. Now there are tools like Cardo and there are vendors like SafeGraph who exist and we're able to use them. So we've pivoted the way that we approach these problems to be closer to how another team would do it. What this also means is that my team, instead of focusing on assembling the information and beginning the process with, I need to go get GPS pings before I can even start my work, or I need to understand every single POI or location for that particular retailer before I can start my work. I can instead find someone else who's very good at it, work with them on doing it, find a tool like Cardo, work with it to be able to understand it, put those two together and have my team focus on the analysis and the outcome. This also gives us the opportunity to pivot the timeline that we do analysis in. So historically, lots of the type of work that I would be doing now would take months and potentially years to assemble we're now doing work in days and weeks. We're not doing work yet in minutes and hours for the type of level of detail that I'll talk about, but we are doing it very quickly, which lets us react and lets us advise our clients to things that are actively happening in the marketplace. 
This is also a variation. Traditionally, using, quote, data for these types of things was not utilized for that because people thought you couldn't get it fast enough, you couldn't do the work fast enough. And now we can. I was just mentioning the, the, the structure of thinking about this as assembling all this, building up the size of team. Uh, don't get me wrong, in, employing a whole lot of people to answer a problem is great. But being able to pivot it so that you can ask different kinds of questions is kind of the point I'm getting at. I by no means suggest that this is simple or something that a computer can just do by itself. I do think educated, smart, thoughtful people need to be involved with it. But I also think educated, smart, thoughtful people can do it once centrally in a format that can then be redisseminated and other people can draw a conclusion from that information. So part of what we do is focus on partnering with vendors to build tools that can then be reapplied not just for ourselves, but for our clients. A key thesis that I represent regularly is, if I'm able to draw a conclusion from this, my client will want to do that too, because they want to check my work, make sure that they understand it, and be willing to put on a trade with it. They're not simply going to take my output and say, gee, thanks, great, I'm now going to go trade $50 million off that. They're going to put the work into it. So as a result, my relationship with vendors is such that I'm able to say, look, I can use your data to answer this question. We have to do more work to it. We have to use other tools. We have to make other assumptions to it. But by letting you be very good at assembling the POIs, understanding weather, understanding physical location of stores, understanding foot traffic or physical traffic of automobiles or whatever, I'll let them be good at that and I'll focus on the analysis for the key question we have as opposed to owning the entire flow of it. To do what I do now, if you started it 10 years ago, that was required. It's not necessarily now, although you still have to be able to figure out who to work with and how to do it. That is a, a big piece of how we've been approaching the space. And I also want to highlight that that's mirrored off of how we believe our clients are approaching the space. So my assumption is there's people in the room that do or want to work in the finance sector. Um, maybe not. Maybe you think all finance sector is evil. That's OK, too. Um, but within that side, those kind of tenets of how you approach this and where the value proposition starts and where it can be commoditized versus where it can be reused is an interesting piece that we've put a lot of effort into. I still focus on finding what the deep question is that I need to work with so that equivalency of some of the other conversations, my clients are my internal research teams. So I have a few hundred people covering a few thousand stocks. I let them tell me the thing they wish they needed to know, the thing that was most important to them, and we focus on how we can help them answer that instead of building something from the beginning and hoping that it works, right? Within what I just described, I want to try to articulate why this is important within what we do and what are, is important to our clients. There are two key concepts within how a lot of people think about trading a portfolio within a fundamental valuation. They're very cheesy, but they, they work. They're, it falls to a baseball analogy because, uh, well, finance likes to fall back to sports analogies. So the two sides of it are a concept called batting and slugging. Batting is you put on 100 trades in a year. How many of them are you right? Great. Slugging is how much do you make on the ones that you make money on? How much do you lose on the ones that you lose money on? Okay, great, those both make sense. I can't change behavior of batting. I cannot convince someone to buy a stock they weren't going to necessarily buy. I can change behavior of slugging. I can convince someone that the data tells me that there's actual grounded truth that makes you more comfortable in what you're doing and makes you more confident in putting it on. And what I can therefore do is encourage my, my clients to be able to, over the long term, be more profitable as they're able to return higher amounts off the things they're right on because we've given them higher conviction in those things, assuming the data is right and assuming that they're right. Big assumptions, I know, but let's just run with that. What this plays into is the difference between prediction and conviction. We're not focused on, conviction, on prediction. I'm not trying to necessarily build a model that will out, out of the box predict something. I'm trying to give conviction into understanding deep questions. And we found that using this type of data lends itself well to that. People understand physical movement. People understand where things physically are. Generally, you'll think about a company, you go, oh, great, will McDonald sell more Big Macs? Well, if I look at every store and count how many people went there, that's giving me a pretty good indication around it. Oh, the modern economy, everything's offline, everything's moving in that direction. That's not necessarily true. There's 
plenty of companies where we really care about it from that perspective. I don't care about the person, I care about the aggregate. So also a pivot away from some of the other dialogues I've seen, I'm not trying to study individual behaviors, I'm trying to study the general trend and reaction to different things within the marketplace. Another facet I want to delve into, and then I'll, I'll give you some specific real world examples, because I assume that's what people are more interested in. One of the key things we found a lot of success with, with geospatial data specifically, is the ability to combine it. One can go and do this with other traditional data sets within finance. People know how to handle things like volume and price and all that kind of stuff. Probably very boring for a lot of people in the room. But it's very hard to do that with a lot of other, other alternative data sets. It's very challenging to connect actual transactions back to incentive, back to consumer behavior, back to whatever. But tying things back to a physical point in space is an understandable, knowable concept where if I combine time and space, I can then do analysis by looking at things like weather combined with foot movement. I can look at census information to give me demographic profiles. Again, a lot of this is things that other speakers have been able to address much more technically, but we're then applying that to make an investment decision to say, I as a senior fundamental portfolio manager managing X dollars, understand this enough to use it to influence my behavior and will transact on it. Which doesn't make it good or bad, but makes it something we're able to capitalize on that and then use that as the first hook to get them to understand other things. I'd like to give a couple examples. So we have actually written on and utilized this sort of tools to better understand relatively silly things. Uh, Six Flags, it's an amusement park. People go there. You go there more when it's sunny, shocking. But when you actually do the math on that and prove it out, it tells the story and helps people understand it. So by being able to isolate every single location, the weather patterns around those locations, aggregating them over time, aggregating them across different places, highlighting the days when it rained, highlighting the days when it didn't, we can articulate to our clients the ability to then help them better predict the future of that company. Because guess what? I can record the weather every day going forward. So if I now have a framework that helps me better understand this, again, super simple stuff, but things that aren't necessarily being applied in ways that everyone would assume, these give us the opportunity to then help people better understand the long-term answer to their key question. Not saying revenue, not saying price. I'm saying the thing that we're told is most important is telling you whether or not more people go there. Well, if I can give you a model that helps you do that, great. Another one that we've had actually a lot of success with that I think helps to show the cross relationship between online and offline, which I think is a good thing to be able to articulate, is looking at actual delivery stores. Great, when I talk about this, I mean things like Deliver Who, Deliver Hero, um, uh, Grubhub, Just Eats, whatever. There's all these different services. Well, these services all work with physical locations, but they all represent them in their own way. So we have to cross-relate them to figure out all 800,000 different restaurants that all these different services work with, which ones actually are only exclusively associated with one delivery company versus another. So we can then be able to speak to, is one delivery service dominating a region of the United States versus another? Is one delivery service actually moving into the place that they said they were moving into? Because we can use tools like Cardo to be able to help us understand the locations of those things, are they actually the same store, are they in the same area, is the demographic information useful, are people actually living in places where people are moving into, instead of just saying, well, the company tends to sell us, tell us that they have more restaurants under their banner. Okay, that's great, but we wanna know, do you actually have unique restaurants? Do you actually have restaurants that no one else has access to? Are you able to show that you own a market in a way that is not protected by somebody else? We've also done significant analysis, which would seem straightforward and is uh, very logical around things like store closures, being able to help better understand if a store is closing, where are the customers gonna go? These are traditionally done by just looking at how far away something is from something else. Again, no big deal. But if we start to combine various data sets to look at historical behavior of the customers that went to the store that's now closing, instead of simply assuming they're gonna go to the one down the street, but instead saying they previously also went to a different store, so therefore I can attribute how many customers were going to store A to store B accurately instead of just guessing at it. It gives us the ability to help our clients understand how an event will occur and how it will actually play out instead of just saying we have a good guess around it.
I think a key piece that I, I, I'm, I'm hitting at several times, but I hope it resonates and is a piece that makes sense, is that what we're trying to do right now is not go out and tell people, I have a prediction that tells you the answer to a question. We're using the types of tools that I know you're using much more directly to help us understand a leaning, a more uh, general understanding of something that previously was relatively unknowable. When we historically looked at a company and simply said, tell me what you think your revenue is, and we're reliant on that, we're limited to when they would tell us information. What we're trying to do is use these types of data sets and these types of tools to help us better be able to articulate the actual events that are occurring within these types of companies and be able to help our clients understand them. Um, thank you very much, I appreciate your time. Please, I'll be around if you have any other questions.